Okay, so strings off. I can see we got a little bit of fret wear in there. So, we'll but the main thing to take care of is this neck reset. So let's get started. Just so you know, the Allen key for for the bolt on the underside of this fingerboard or other. It's either 4.7 millimeters or 0.1865 thou. Weird size. I have two of these. Now that I've loosened off that bolt, I've cut this off so that I can just go in and spin it out like so. So, I've mentioned this in so many other videos. I know you keep hearing me say that, but it's true. A three-year-old could strip these with a ratchet. You know, this is one of those Zen things where you got to know exactly how much torque to put on those bolts without stripping them. I have the neck held here, so I'm not worried about stuff clattering to the floor. Because when I pull this out, there's really nothing but the press fit kind of holding it all together. There we go. There's our second bolt. I don't have to worry about this, that's held, but I do have to worry about the body. So I'm holding the body, I'm putting my forearm onto the bridge and just flexing down, like so. And that is what we've got. I'll bring you in for a closer look. So these are the Taylor shims that you can pull out and reset the neck a lot easier than resetting a dovetail. Okay, let's have a look. So let me just back this up. Here's full thickness on this end and we've tapered it down considerably. So we'll put it back on the guitar, assemble it very quickly and check that neck angle. So we're going to put that neck back on, snug it down loosely, and we'll put the two bolts back in just kind of finger tight. So this mechanical neck joint allows me to gradually adjust that neck angle bit by bit Okay, so they're both kind of finger tightened. So I'm just finger tightening just to kind of get a read on uh, what this neck angle is going to be. I'll use a straight edge to kind of bring you in for a closer look to give us an accurate read on the uh, neck to body angle. Good. All right, that feels good. So now let's put a straight edge on there and see what we got. So when I put that straight edge on there and I kind of slide up to the bridge, it just about kisses the wood of the bridge. And that is best case scenario. So we got it bang on the money that first time through. So now there's plenty of real estate in the height of that saddle that we can put the action anywhere we want it on this guitar. And of course we're going to triple check it for the intonation as well. Well now that that neck reset is done, we'll get rid of all that fret wear in the first five, six frets and buff them out to a mirror shine and she'll be good to go. This is our second piece of 400 grit. Step it up to 600. And now we're ready to buff. So both the Taylor neck reset and set up fret dress, that's done, and Jody's Martin is done as well. Same thing, fret dress, uh, neck reset. I'm going to post these videos individually. You can see how different the procedure is for the Martin versus the Taylor. So I've opted to go with the Taylor guitar as far as laying down the tracks because the Martin is completely acoustic. 
So when you reset the neck on the guitar, there's a bunch of different things that line up. One being the intonation, second being the playability. When the guitar came in, the action was super high. So what that means when the action is that high is that you exert successively more pressure as you ascend the fingerboard. For the guitar to be regulated accurately, you need to more or less exert the same amount of force wherever you are on the neck for all of the notes to be sort of regulated and in tune. Second thing, with Taylor guitars, like the Paul Reed Smith guitars, they actually nip off a little bit off the end of the fingerboard, which reduces that sharpness in the first position. It's one of the reasons that the Taylor guitars tend to intonate very well in the first position compared to other brands. So you saw what we went through with this guitar, re resetting the neck, dressing the frets, and just basic overall setup to get it to play this accurately. We've gone with C minor again this time. The progression is like this. So I've looped that progression, I'm going to let that play, and I'll play over top of it with this guitar, and then I'll switch over to the completely acoustic Martin guitar and continue with that single line blowing. Thank you. 